friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how I call my senior sessions and really any portrait sessions in 10 minutes or less. So if this is something you would like to learn, just keep watching. Again, if you are new to my channel, my name is Hope and I am so grateful that you're here. I am a senior portrait photographer serving both Charleston and Savannah and this YouTube channel is where I share education for photographers as well as a little bit of a peek into my life living in the low country. And I actually have a free gift for you in the description down below. And before I dive into the actual content of the video, I wanted to kind of preface by giving you backstory on my senior sessions because I used to really, really struggle with my clients showing up in cute outfits and my clients caring about the session as much as I do. And you're going to see Grayson shoot here in just a second. And her outfits are adorable. She was like beautifully prepared for her session. And I'm obsessed with the way her outfits coordinate with the locations that we were shooting, but that isn't by accident. So the free gift in the description is the top five pages to include in your senior style guide. And if you watched my other videos, you may have heard me talk about this, but I have a 60 plus page document that I send to all of my senior clients after they book me to help them prepare for their senior sessions. And this document walks them through every single thing they need to know about their senior portrait experience, what to expect, how to prepare, what to wear, hair and makeup, location options, what to do in different seasons, what to do if things go wrong, frequently asked questions. There are so many things in the senior style guide. So if you want to get a peek at it and see the top five pages that I I think are vital to include, as well as some visual inspiration to create your own, then go ahead and download the free guide in the description. It's going to talk you through what to include and give you an actual peek into my real senior style guide. And I'd love for you to get your hands on it just to say thanks so much for watching. But let's get back into calling a senior session in 10 minutes. And I don't know about you guys, I'd actually love to hear in the comments down below, but culling used to be the bane of my existence. <laughs> like as a photographer, I used to dread culling my sessions because it took me almost as long as it did to edit them. Like I would spend just as much time calling and going through the session to pick which images I was going to send to my client as I did actually editing the images. And it felt like this painstaking process that was just sucking so much of my time. And it felt like there had to be an easier way to do it. Um, and I'm going to be talking you guys through how I do it now in like 10 to 15 minutes. And it is truly a game changer in my workflow and in my time saving um, to be able to call sessions quickly. And I'm going to show you guys a screen recording of me actually calling a real shoot, but I kind of want to talk through some tips and tricks first, because the number one thing to know about calling sessions quickly is that the best way to be able to call sessions fast is to nail things the first time in camera. If you can nail your cropping and your camera settings and your focus in camera, actually at the shoot, it is going to drastically cut down on your calling and your editing time. For a really long time, it was pretty popular to just kind of shoot away at a session and hope for the best and fix anything in post-processing later. And I actually used to do that a lot of the time. I was like, hey, the lighting's not perfect, the pose isn't for perfect, but I can fix it later, right? That's the beauty of editing, the beauty of Photoshop. But what has changed the game for me is really shifting my focus and my perspective to try to nail every single photo in camera to the best of my ability. Because if I'm going Going through and calling photos that are out of focus or poorly cropped or are going to take a ton of photoshopping to be right, I'm going to have to analyze every single detail of that photo to be sure that it's the right one, right? Like if it's slightly blurry or their hair is totally out of place and it's going to take hours in Photoshop to perfect, it's going to be much harder for me to decide which five, which of the five images from that set is going to look perfect after those hours of Photoshop. But if I have it right in camera the first time, I can very quickly at one glance say, oh, that's the one it's perfectly in focus. Let's keep going. So tip number one is to try really, really hard to slow down at your sessions and focus on nailing everything the first time in camera. I know that's easier said than done and takes a lot of practice. I actually have a membership where you can watch me shoot senior sessions every month. The shoot that I'm about to show you is inside of the senior scoop. If you want to see me shoot this session in real time and see what my camera settings are and my thought process behind getting everything right in camera, but just shifting your focus from, oh, 
oh, don't worry about it. I'll fix it later. Like, oh, her hair's out of place. I'll fix it later. Shifting that thought process to, no, I'm actually going to slow down and take the time to make sure her hair is perfect and the wind isn't blowing things out of place and my camera settings are locked in while at the shoot will save you hours of time later. My second tip is to try your absolute best to not overshoot. Again, so much easier said than done. I am notorious for overshooting. The session I'm about to show you, let's see how many photos I took. I took 926 photos at a two and a half hour shoot. That is way overshooting. So this is me uh, saying, do as I say, not as I do. But try your absolute best not to take 10, 15 photos of every single pose. Again, this is me talking to myself because I have my camera on multi-shoot most of the time. Just because at a wedding day, I really wanna be able to go click, 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 click and not miss a single moment but at a portrait session that isn't quite as necessary and you and I both need to get in the habit of turning that off and only getting one or two shots in each pose and just trusting ourselves and our camera that it's going to be perfect and it's going to be in focus the first time this will drastically cut down on your calling process tip number three is to try your best to not be a perfectionist in the calling process and this is going to be the hardest one for a lot of us it was the hardest one for me because it was so easy for me to spend hours dissecting every detail of the photo and think to myself, okay, her eyes are slightly different in these two images. Which one is she going to like better? But we have to remind ourselves as photographers, especially photographers that shoot like me, where I heavily over deliver in my client galleries. I promise them 60 images, but they typically get closer to 80 to 100 photos in their final gallery. And I have to remind myself that they're probably only going to share or print or love maybe 10 to 20 of those photos, right? They're going to have probably 10 to 20 favorites and if I spend hours trying to make sure that all 100 photos are perfect and are going to be a favorite, then I'm going to waste a lot of time and it's going to slow down the process of them getting their images, which makes them less excited, which ultimately actually hurts this client experience more than maybe having a photo in there that is like slightly out of focus or not exactly perfect in every way. So I try to be really gentle with myself in the calling process and I like to do it really fast. Like I don't let myself second guess for the most part. I just go through and I'm like, oh, is it in focus? Is the is it a flattering angle of my client? Is it not a duplicate? Um, does it represent my style well? Okay, if it checks those four boxes, then it's getting added to the final gallery. And then later, when I'm actually editing in Lightroom, I might delete some if they were too similar or if maybe it wasn't perfectly in focus, but I would rather overcall in this first step and maybe have 120 final images and then cut some down later in Lightroom than spend hours and hours and hours trying to painstakingly make sure that everything's perfect. So here's my permission for you to not take hours and hours and hours to make sure this first step of the calling process is perfect. It doesn't have to be. And last thing is the program that I use for this is called Photo Mechanic. And I'm going to drop a link to that down below. I'm actually not an affiliate for them. I don't get paid to say that. But I used to call my sessions in Lightroom and it would take hours, hours and hours, because I would go to the next photo and have to wait a second for it to load. And then I could decide if I liked it and then go to the next one, wait for it to load, decide if I liked it. And it took forever. In Photo Mechanic, you are actually seeing JPEGs, not the raw files. And because of that, they load much faster. They're all already rendered. So I don't have to wait for the photos to load in order to see them and decide if I like them and see if they're in focus. I can go boom, 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 boom. And they are already loaded for me, which is a game changer. So Let's go ahead and move over to my laptop. This is what it looks like inside of Photo Mechanic. So I have just opened the unedited raw folder of her images and you can see them all here. Again, there's over 900 because I have a problem with overshooting. But what I'm going to do is just double click on this first image and it's gonna open in its own window. I can, you can see how quickly here I can click through these photos and they're all automatically loaded. I can see the final image, um, the JPEG, see if it's in focus and see if I like it uh, without having to wait for each individual image to render. So each number on the keyboard represents a different color. Um, I use the number six just because you can see in the bottom right corner, it makes it blue and that's my favorite color. What I'm going to do is go through this entire shoot and just click six on every single photo that I want to keep. Again, I'm thinking about four criteria. Is it in focus? Is it flattering of my client? Does it represent my style well? Is it on brand for me? And is it a duplicate? And if it's not a duplicate and it meets those three requirements, requirements, I'm going to add it to the final gallery. I'm going to tap six. So for the sake of time, I'm going to time this really quickly and I'm going to call this entire session just by clicking through and tapping six on every single photo that I want to keep. So you guys can see how quickly I do this and what it looks like in photo mechanic. Let's do it.
Okay, I think that was actually less than 10 minutes, which is awesome. Um, so once I've done that and I've gone through and I've just decided my favorite photo from each set, I'm gonna go up here to the top right corner and you can see there's a little black box in the corner. I'm gonna select that, which is basically going to take away any photos that didn't get selected. Um, and I have selected 171 photos. That is a lot, but I would rather move these into Lightroom and start the editing process and do my same day sneak peeks because I actually call shoots the same day that I took them. So I would come home from the shoot, call it in 10 minutes, edit the 10 to 15 sneak peeks, post those on social media, and then revisit in Lightroom the next day, go through and as I'm editing, delete things that were duplicates or one too many. And that just speeds up the process because it gets them out of photo mechanic and into Lightroom and prevents me procrastinating on going back to finish calling. So what I do now is I'm gonna hit Command A and I'm just gonna drag and drop these into the Lightroom window and it's gonna automatically open only the photos that I selected in Lightroom. So I hope it was kind of helpful to see that and just freeing to have permission to not be a perfectionist anymore. If you want to see me edit this full shoot, you can do that inside of the Senior Scoop membership as well. It's only $27 a month and I do a new senior session every single month. And again, would love to have you download that free gift down in the description. It is the top five pages that you should be including in your senior style guide to help your clients prepare for their shoot. Just as my gift to you to say thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. I'd be so grateful to have you subscribe. I share new videos every week, so I will see you guys next Monday. Bye.